Kentucky. We send you to College Station and say hello to Mike Morgan and John Sunbold. Gentlemen. And we welcome everybody into a sold-out Reed Arena in College Station, Texas. The Aggies trying to improve to 5-0, and looking for their ninth consecutive win against the number 12 team in the land, the Kentucky Wildcats. Alley-oop, and there's Brooks missing on the business end and cleaned up by Marcus Williams. Missed time by Brooks. Uh, Kentucky, 2 of 8 to start this game. A&M comfortable so far on the offensive end. They're 3 of 5. 3. Wow. An air ball. Texas A&M comes into this game number one of the league in three-point shooting. Brooks with an and one. A reach-in foul on Gordon as Keon Brooks was gliding to the basket. One of the things uh, Buzz Williams told his team today, we've got to get back on defense. They're an outstanding three-point shooting team, but if you miss, Kentucky will run. And they've got size to finish at the rim. Brooks, who missed the easy one, last possession down. That one he'll finish. Mike Morgan, John Sunbull, great to be with you on this Wednesday night affair. Two of the top three teams in the SEC right now, record-wise. As Brooks can't get the free throw to go, score remains deadlocked at six. Rise and fire three, hits a lower corner of the backboard and out of bounds to Kentucky, and that'll bring us to our first media timeout as we step aside. Wildcat six. Aggie six from College Station. They dominate the glass, and they've also shot the ball much better than they did a year ago. That's why John Calipari, when we talk to him today, that's about as upbeat as I've heard John during a shoot around in a while. And I think most of that comes to the fact he loves the makeup of this team. Yeah, he likes his team. He likes how they play. And obviously, I think they played the best game in college basketball Saturday afternoon when they beat Kentucky 107 to 79. Yeah, 107 points against that Tennessee defense. That is no small task. Shot clock down to six. Great Wheeler trap. is sandwiched and trapped and a jump ball. This is an active Aggie defense. You cannot get to the sideline and pick up the dribble. Wheeler. Got trapped, but they've got very active bodies on that Aggie side. Aggies had the possession arrow. Tyrese Radford was in on that trap, and he means so much to this Aggie squad. The transfer from Virginia Tech, the man that Buzz Williams gave the nickname Boots because of the toughness that he displays. Keep an eye on number one, Marcus Williams, with the basketball. He's already hit two jump shots. When he gets comfortable, he's very good. Kentucky man-to-man -man defensively. Andre Gordon probes the left side. Drive and kick to Ratford. Up top, three to shoot. A runner. No on the bounce. And there's Shibwe on another rebound. Ty Ty with a floater. Left it short. Ratford on the board. If that's the foul on Ty Ty, that's his second with 1457 to play. Yeah, tough start. Shooting percentage tonight, different than he's been. He's one of four from the field. And he's got outstanding numbers. Over 50% from field goal, over 43 points, over 80 from the free throw line. And the only player in the SEC, regardless of class, freshman, senior, fifth-year senior, to be able to claim those type of efficiency numbers and his assist to turnover ratio is off the charts good too. Not your typical 19-year-old. Yeah, he leads the league. 2.7 assists to turnovers, leads the league. Odd for being a freshman to do that. Extremely. Now Kellen Brady in the game. Boy, they've gotten so much production out of the transfer from Davison. Active hands by Grady to knock it loose. Kentucky could not come up with a loose ball. Shot clock under five inside. Carving out space and banking it home is Henry Coleman. In SEC play, Coleman averaging 18 a game. Four games the last four, 23, 14, 18, and 18, shooting nearly 70%. In those guys. 6'8 wide body transfer from Duke. Henry Coleman going to have to play big tonight. Weave up top as Brady hands it off to Wheeler with four. Great defense again. Mintz has to launch a desperation shot, and that is all suffocating defense by the Aggies. Communication, Mike, on the defensive end. Changing bodies, changing defenses. Talking, trapping with a shot clock goes down. They get out and trap. Nowhere for Wheeler to go. If he sits on the ball, if he sits on the dribble, he'll have a long night. Kentucky has not had many good looks yet, and just three for 11 from the field. Again, the wild.
Wildcats come in shooting 51% to lead the Southeastern Conference. And the guy with the basketball, Williams, is the difference of their team from a year ago. Williams up top. Into the corner to Ratford. Guarded by Grady. Again, the shot clock continues to tick down. Now under five. Rise and fire three off the mark by Jackson. Then a whistle down low. It's going to go against the Aggies. Yeah, Aaron Cash in the lineup. Junior college transfer from Grayson College. Active rebounder. They've got to keep him off the glass. Not a big score. But he usually gives Bud Will Buzz Williams and this Aggie team extra possessions on the offensive glass. It's probably what it's going to take tonight, isn't it? Some extra possessions for yeah, AM. It really will. AM's got to be solid on the defensive end. Right now, Kentucky not in sync offensively, not shooting the ball well, not quality shots. They're 3 of 12 from the field. Inside, count the basket plus the foul for Henry Coleman. Again, let's not sit back and think the Aggies will walk the ball up the floor. They will try to attack in different angles because they all can run. Henry Coleman's a big, but he can run rim to rim. He can space out. He would rather take it to the rim to finish the play. Four points, three rebounds already for Coleman, who will complete the three-point play the hard way. Aggies up by five. One, two, two defense, three-quarter. This is their cold, cold defense because it's soft. When they call hot, they will try to trap the basketball. We are trying to set up the offense up top. It's a ball screen. Now it into another trap and stole it away. Aggies with number. Here comes Radford. Foul from behind. John, we talked to Coach Calipari before this game. He knows all about this trap. He knows it's yep. coming. The players worked on it and shoot around this morning. But so far, they've been stymied by it. Well, Wheeler keeps sitting on the ball. What do I mean? He keeps it, and he gets the deep. The, the trap is coming. And the longer he stays on the bounce, guys like Tyrese Radford are outstanding with their quickness. He now goes to the free throw line. His feet move. His hands are active. If he gets you to where you pick up the dribble, you're in trouble. And that's the second time that Wheeler's picked it up right in front of him. And it's a turnover. Radford, a great story out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, was not recruited by many Division I schools at all. Winds up going to Virginia Tech when Buzz Williams was the coach there. Didn't play much there either. Decided to follow Buzz to Texas A&M, and he has been such an addition. Inside, Collins tried to drop the hammer. Wheeler, tough shot off the back iron and flying in for the board is Jackson. If Wheeler lobs it, they've got a dunk. And then a steal by Collins. You know, Mintz, Mintz now in the lineup has been outstanding. Maybe he can settle this Kentucky team down. Wheeler that time takes it strong to the left side. Savier Wheeler, third in the nation in assists. Number one of the SEC, but he's been scoring more of late as well. Mike, what a good team has is when their guys that come off the bench are as good as the starters, and that's what A&M has. Q Richardson with the basketball, when he comes in, uh, we're going to see Taylor coming in in second as a point guard. They're just as good as a starter. Oh, pretty move wow. on a crossover pull-up by Marcus Williams. Did he do that at Wyoming? Well, his confidence is high. Off to a great start tonight. Originally out of Dickinson, Texas. Mints on a drive. Alley-oop in there off his pogo stick is Damian Collins. Collins freakish athlete who in time could be super. He's just undersized from a muscle standpoint right now. Rail thin. And Kentucky knows they can get lobs on the back end as long as they don't turn it over and keep their eyes open. Follow up off the miss. It's Aaron Cash with the stick back. Brooks from the elbow. Book it. Boy, back and forth. What a pace to this game early. And you think A&M can keep up with them? I do, because they're here. They're in this building. This mm -hmm. crowd is on fire. They're electric. Yeah, you and I have been to Reed Arena a number of times over the years. This is a different field tonight. That's going to be a push foul on Grady. 
And that'll bring us to timeout with 10.32 to go. Aggies on top by four over Big Blue. Guys that were here before, like Andre Gordon and, and, and Q Richardson, that, that have welcomed the new guys, and, and they're all together, right? They're, they don't have any ego problems. They have no issues. They've been able now to go on the road, three straight road wins. They've been able to play well at home. We had them in their win against Arkansas, and they're confident from top to bottom that they can play with Kentucky tonight. Yeah, a whole lot of confidence. They've won eight in a row now. That that game that you and I did where they lost to TCU, a very winnable game, by the way. They haven't lost a game since. They've rattled off eight straight wins. They're 10-0 here at the friendly confines of Reed Arena, and they're 4-0 in the SEC. Best start in six years. What do you want to see out of Kentucky offensively? Well, again, really to settle down. And every time they've gone into trouble, they're dri dri dribbling into trouble. Use the pass, use the bounce, space it a little more, get away from the double teams. And if it comes, get rid of it quickly. Brooks with five to shoot. No. And a nice box out of Sheboy. They have done a pretty good job keeping Sheboy off the offensive glass. AM has allowed Keon Brooks a couple open looks. Right. Right. They've trapped, they've doubled. Tough shot. Sheboy brings it down. Yeah, Taylor's taken two quick shots since he's been in. Had a bad performance against Missouri, went 0 of 7, which is unusual for the freshman guard. The out of bounds to Kentucky. And Texas A&M will send Hassan Diara in. Diara, who was one of the heroes in that comeback win against Missouri. If you heard the post-game interview with Buzz Williams, he just gushes about Hassan Diara, a young man that came from some really hard times and a hard environment back in Queens, New York. Got word from an AAU coach that he's known for 20 years that you need to look at this kid. Wound up giving him a scholarship and absolutely loves what he brings to the table. Out of bounds at Ormain, Kentucky basketball with nine to shoot. Yeah, Buzz described him as almost an assistant coach uh, in his ability to tell the truth. And a lot of players don't like the truth, right. won't tell the truth. Uh, Hassan does it. Had to step back three in their win against Abilene Christian. Sometimes you can't handle the truth, John <laughs> Sunbolt. That's right, so don't say anything. <laughs> Brooks on a wow, fade and fire. Stop. That's real tough. They're not getting good looks at all against this Aggies defense. And three bodies around Sheboy. Beautiful twisting take by a very talented freshman, Wade Taylor the fourth. He's not afraid. Grady pops out. The SEC's leading three-point shooter all the way to the basket is Quentin Jackson. So, partner, did you think they'd slow it down a little bit? Whoa. Not here. Not here. Here they go. A boost in tempo. Uh, we've seen his progression as really only a slasher a year ago to now he's at 41% from three-point lane. He, he's got the to total package on the offensive end. And his game has certainly evolved. And you mentioned the issues a year ago. Not only did Texas A&M have a rough go of it record-wise, they went nearly a month without a game due to COVID. I mean, it was just a nightmare upon nightmare of a season. So these two teams didn't even play last year. Mintz on the baseline, hounded by Taylor. Five to shoot, Wheeler to Grady. Tough shot, another tough shot. Grady now 0 for 3. Mike 6 for 21 from the field is Kentucky. Beautiful dime drop by Taylor. Well, look how quickly. Defense is getting back to shooters. Grady, so unbrady like now, 0 for 4. He came in, leading the entire SEC in three point shooting at 46%. Tough shots when they're challenged, but he usually makes open ones. There you saw Wade Taylor, the fourth, Lancaster, Texas, dropping it off. We've already seen him score the offensive end. Drops it off to Aaron Cash. Another two guys off the bench. What Buzz brings into the game off the bench really is no different than what he has starting this game. Kentucky has missed its last five field goals. They are 0 for 8 from downtown. It's not a team that normally relies on the three, but they certainly can hit them with guys like Grady and Washington. Again, they really miss Ty Ty Washington. 
now back on the floor with those two two with those two fouls. And Ty Ty's got to be careful too. Picks one off. Right on to Washington. Block from behind, but a foul. So Ty Ty comes off the bench, gets a steal, and will go to the line for a pair when we come back with 7.43 to go. The Aggies up by eight. They're 22 points in the paint. Buckets in transition. Buckets on penetration. They have taken it right to Kentucky. Yeah, they really have. And they've energized this crowd and kept them involved. Kentucky used to big crowds on the road, no doubt. But what they're best at is keeping a quiet crowd. Right. right? Everybody hush. This Aggie crowd is uh, up and loud. Washington. Wow. Wow, an empty trip for an 82% free throw shooter. I mean, Kentucky is just all kinds of out of sorts right now. Grady missing open threes. Ty Ty missing free throws. Chibwe has been relatively quiet. And if you're AM, you want to keep taking advantage of poor offense by Kentucky. There's that man we talked about, Hassan Diara with a triple. Wildcats in a scoring drought that has lasted nearly four minutes. Uh, reach in foul. A little too aggressive that time by Diara. Yeah, that far away from the basket. Ty Ty not making an offensive move. Diara not known as a long range shooter, although he's made 35% this year, but capable, normally puts it on the floor, tries to get to the rim. I was trying to think the last time we saw a team that went from dead last in three point shooting in the, the very next year, number one. That's what the Aggies have done so far. Well, I'll, I'll promise you, part it was before the transfer rule. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, <laughs> it was before the portal. <laughs> That's right. You bring in eight new guys and you bring in better shooters than the eight you sent out. Better players, better results for that man who ordinarily in year three, you go back to Marquette, you go back to Virginia Tech, and they make it to the NCAA tournament. In fact, in year three and beyond, you see all the NCAA appearances. That's what they're hoping for here in College Station. It's been a few years since they've gotten to the big dance, but it appears as if they've got a team that certainly is going to be able to compete for it. Buzz Williams from... Van Alstein, Texas, north of Dallas. He was talking to us about that. He said, I graduated from a high school class of 44 people. There were no traffic lights. Population, 1,800. He was a student manager at Navarro Junior College, then NAIA, and eventually got his first assistant coaching job as Wade Taylor takes it to the rack. But how explosive has Wade Taylor been early in this game? Tough shot by Wheeler. There's Shibwe on the offensive glass. So hard to box out number 34 in blue. When you've got active guys who can take it to the rim, Shibwe just positions himself for that offensive ball. Into traffic. Tough shot that time by Taylor. Ran into a brick wall. And Buzz Williams got five guys ready to come in. Wheeler turns it over. Three on one. Follow, yes, Quentin Jackson. Toppin takes it strong, left it short, gets his own rebound. A good hustle. Mince on a three. Kentucky remains ice cold from outside. Now 0 for 9. 0 for 9 from behind the arc for the Wildcats. And that was a good look for Mintz. Good hustle by Toppin to keep that ball alive. He missed the point back. And then here's the uh, look off of uh, Diara's fingers. 6-2. Trying to block out 6-0. Wheeler now hounded by Marcus Williams. Mintz takes it strong. Around the horn, into the hands of Wheeler on an open three, and that drought is over. Samir hits the tray, and it's a 10-point game. So the guy who makes 20% that they uh, <laughs> the Aggies want to have shoot, knocks it in. 
One for ten now from downtown is Big Blue. Coleman sets up Williams on a three. Yeah, tough shot. He didn't really he didn't really get it in rhythm. Wheeler tries to feed Chibwe, but that pass is wide of the mark. Oscar saying, hey, I had the position. You gotta put that one on target. And Cal saying, let him get set. Chibwe got in there, was moving, what set to catch? Turnover. Ninth turnover of the half now on Kentucky. The Aggies give it right back as Williams tosses it out of bounds. That miscommunication, what's great is watching the guys on the floor. Williams and Andre Gordon talking to each other about where he thought the other was going. Communication at the highest level. Now the good news for Kentucky, I, I don't know if things could have gone much worse in the first 15 minutes of this game. They're still only down 10. You know, think of the Aggies game on Saturday at Missouri. They were down 12-0 before they scored. And if Missouri would have played better offensively, could have been maybe ahead by 20, 24 points. Right. Did not stretch it far enough. Aggies came back to win. Yeah, and then went nearly eight minutes to start that game without a point. Brady remains chilly. Shibwe does what he does. And he'll go to the line for a pair. Now on Tuesday, we'll have a men's basketball doubleheader for you. We're featuring the second game, and we're featuring Jabari Smith. If you haven't seen him yet, he might be the number one pick in the draft. He leads number two, Auburn, against Mizzou in Columbia. Coverage of that game starts at 8.30 Eastern time right here on the SEC Network. Is there anything not to like about Auburn right now? <laughs> no. No. They are playing at a high level. They defend, they run, they defend the rim, they shoot it. Shibwe already with seven rebounds to go along with five points. He's had an incredible start of the season, hasn't he? He really has, and he's the kind of young man you pull for in athletics. If you get a chance to speak with him, as you and I have, he's humble, down to earth. Just wants to go out there, help his team win. Four, four ball games over 20 rebounds. That's incredible. Yeah. Timeout on the floor, 3.57 to play. Aggies up by eight. By far and away, Sonny, would be the best win on their resume. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. I mean, it's they have a resume that they've now put in front of people that uh, can only build if they keep winning. There's mm -hmm. no doubt. And the Aggies come into this game. They've won eight in a row. 10 0 here at Reed Arena. And Radford's been terrific defensively out front. We're going to watch the communication of the switching. Brady lost it. Sheboy had it. Got it blocked. Gets it back. Tries to dunk it. Misfires. Here come the Aggies the other way. Williams on the drive. Leaves it off to the big man. That's Henry Coleman on the finish. Aggies have had no problem with their backcourt getting to the rim, getting to the lane. The bigs of Kentucky have to help out. Bigs of A&M wide open to the rim. A lot of contact, and there is the whistle as Bryce Hopkins takes it strong. Yeah, this is a different Aggie team than people can remember a year ago if you've not seen a play. There's the transfer, Marcus Williams. Again, if you don't pick him up and don't stop, he is confident enough to, make, to finish the play by himself, to pull up for jump shots. Uh, it is terrific at assisting on baskets. He had about three or four down the stretch in the Missouri win uh, That were terrific. He dropped them off to Coleman. I remember before the first A&M game you and I had about a month ago or so and you were watching film on Marcus Williams At Wyoming and you really thought he could be a factor in this league and obviously he has been well He's got good size. He's 6'2 about 200 pounds and then there's a swagger a confidence about him that when he got here for Buzz Williams team again, maybe a chip on his shoulders wasn't highly recruited out of Dickinson, Texas uh, Comes back to his home state and has been absolutely terrific The freshman Bryce Hopkins splits the freebies. He'll go back to the bench. Wheeler will come back in for Kentucky Funny thing is you take out Marcus Williams and then here comes the true freshman Wade Taylor 
We've already seen what he can do. Makes jump shots, blows by people. Very confident with the basketball. Yeah, he might be a good one in this league for years to come. Yeah, really he's going to be. Bradford, strong drive. Blocked. And then stolen away. Coleman on Chibwe. Took it right at the shot blocker. And we have seen two or three times when Kentucky gets a rebound, they double him right there so they can't get the ball out and get it on a break. If the release is quicker by the bigs for Kentucky and get the ball out of there, they'll have chances to score. Mintz pounded. And an offensive foul. He got frustrated by Wade Taylor being all over him and then wound up committing the offensive foul. I'm always interested if the referee called that or did Buzz in the sideline call it. <laughs> I think Buzz because it was about, had... a, about a two second whistle delay, yeah. right? <laughs> Taylor went down, and I think the official looked over there and went, I wonder what happened. They would have to go in the first half, 11 point game. Steal by Shibwe. Wheeler, shake and bake to Brooks, hanging, firing, missing. How physical have the Aggies been with Kentucky right at the rim? And they're not the biggest team out there. Certainly, Kentucky has more size. Well, take a look at Radford. He's 6'2. Right. He's kind of their small forward slash big forward. So. Rebound of the air ball. Follow is no good. Right, look at the fight by the Aggies. So much of it, in fact. Another take, another block. Gordon can't get it to the rim. Mints the other way. Mints wow. got it to go off the window and in. A chance for three the hard way for Davion Mintz. Well, we knew it's going to be a fight. And Mintz has been around a long time. He has played terrifically in the last week and a half of basketball, shooting the ball well, being aggressive, coming off the bench, giving great minutes to Cal's team. Yeah, such a luxury to have a guy like Mintz who can play the one or the two off the bench. This is a guy that could start for most college basketball teams across the country. Yeah, 13 points, averaging in his last five. Boy, they have not shot the oh. ball well, though. They continue to struggle at the line. Five for ten, but an offensive rebound. They'll be happy to change ends, partner. And have <laughs> yes, time. they will. Wheeler with a creative bucket. Just sweeping that running hook shot for the left side. And for all of us uh, gushing about the Aggies, Kentucky, only down south. Oh, yeah, right there. A team with a whole lot of spurtability, that's for sure. Strong take. Re-raced by Shibwe. Oscar Shibwe, off ball, came over. And just knocked it away. And softly blocked it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, softly blocked it. But again, I'm, I'm more concerned if I'm Kentucky's bench that you got beat off the dribble again. Right. Bradford went right by. Him. Straight line drives. They've been working all night for Texas A&M. Kentucky's best offense has been second half points. Turnover on Shibwe. Ahead of the pack. Slam City for Jackson. Wheeler to top it and a silencer. Well, how about the noise in the, this crowd? Deafening. Woo. I mean, they brought their A game in the seats tonight. AM has brought it on the hardwood. Active hands, active feet, communication. The SEC, the think the country, if they can pull this off, win nine in a row, improve to 5-0 in the league, and 16-2 and overall. Final 36 seconds of the half. Jackson probes the baseline, but threw it right in the direction of Shibwe. Shibwe so good. Quick with his feet, active with his hands. Shot clock is off. We'll see where Kentucky goes for the final shot attempt. Grady in one corner, Mintz in the other corner. We see a drive and kick by Wheeler. There's the drive, the spin. Oh, Wheeler! Wow. 
in between two defenders. That's his highlight for half number one. And it gives Kentucky a little momentum going into intermission. Wow, what a move. The spin back to him. Jackson's in. One of the top teams in the country, and they're only down five. So what do you expect to see different in this second half? Well, still being aggressive. Ty Ty Washington, because of his two fouls, only took four shots, only made one. Grady was 0-5 from the field. Uh, they've got to make shots, right? I thought Henry Coleman was terrific in the first half. We wondered if he could handle the size and the physicality of this Kentucky team. He did. Washington handing off to Brooks. A lot of what you just saw there, deflected passes for Kentucky. A&M very active. Interchangeable parts defensively. And I think what Cal's looking for is when there's a mismatch, right? Keon Brooks has the ball at 6-7. When Gordon at 6-2 switched off on him, Brooks took it right to the rim. Second foul on Ethan Henderson. Keon Brooks, the junior out of Fort Wayne, Indiana, will go to the free throw line. I think this is the difference maker to their team. They've got a lot of pieces, a lot of parts when they play great. Um, they got a lot of weapons, but I think Keon Brooks is a guy that can make a difference. When he's playing really well, uh, everything goes well. And he's accepted, I think, his role on this team. And he's like everybody else that comes to Kentucky, right? Blue yeah. chip, All-American, yeah. used to be in the guy. He's not the guy on this team. He's the glue guy. Yeah, he really is. Both ends of the floor, defensively, offensively, plays above the rim. Explosive, can guard, can run. But this is the start that Kentucky wants. You get to the foul line early. See if they can settle the crowd down. Yeah. This crowd has been in a fever pitch from the moment we walked in, Mike. Uh, it's been deafening noise for most of the evening so far. We'll see if the Aggies can keep them joyous here at Reed Arena. Three good ball handlers on offense, Williams, Gordon, and Radford for the Aggies. Radford in the corner, up top to Gordon, working on Brady. Shot clock down to seven. Gordon, crossover, and throws it out of bounds, wide of the mark to Radford, good defense by Kentucky. I know everybody talks about the first four minutes of the second half, mm -hmm. it's important. Yeah. up there at the top of your screen number 31 scoreless so far 0 for 5 from the field Wheeler trapped again that's been happening all game to Savier Wheeler and the Aggies have it get it out Grady got it into Sheebway's hands five to shoot Washington no Sheebway Wheeler unloads a three. Got it from the top, and we're tied at 35. What a possession to keep the basketball. The least threatening three-point shooter for Kentucky, Savier Wheeler, has hit the most. And Wheeler on a steal. Full throttle front court. Wheeler all the way. Leads it off for Brooks. And out of bounds off Kentucky. Boy, missed opportunity. Good steal by Wheeler. The pass from Williams was too low for Henderson to handle the basketball. When he threw it that low, that puts it right to Wheeler's wheelhouse. Wheeler active hands to start this second half. Kentucky starts off on a 5-0 run. And Wheeler tried to get the steal. A little too much contact across the body of Tyrese Radford. Shorter players love the fact that they can play everything down low. Mm -hmm. so anytime a ball's being dribbled in front of them, their hands are below the knees of the offensive player. Did those guys drive you crazy, the little guys? Yes, yes. Not that I was that big myself. But what a battle. What a battle. Grady lost it. Oh, a tough game for Grady. Here come the Aggies all the way to the hole. It's Diara. You know, I think smart play by Ty Ty Washington not to pick up his third foul. Wow. Don't even challenge. It's just one bucket.
Wheeler probing, lost his handle to Brooks. And a foul on the Aggies. Take a look earlier, Kellen Grady simply loses control of the basketball. DR is going to take it into Ty Ty Washington's body. Smart play. Easy bucket, no foul. You know, the possessions by Kentucky, Mike, have been uh, really out of sorts. Mm -hmm. Severe Wheeler keeps with the basketball, nearly turns it over, but they maintain the possession and go on to the free throw line. Uh, you think about it this way as Brooks misfires on the first free throw. Grady and Washington, who have provided a whole lot of offense here of late for the Wildcats, combined one for ten. Yeah, wow. So so now, you know, Shibway, as good as he is, the offense doesn't go through him. Yeah. And then Xavier Wheeler is more of a facilitator, so where are you going to get those buckets? But I think sometimes Wheeler will take it on himself, which he has tonight, mm -hmm. right? To yep. make a big shot or two, or at least to take it to the rim by himself. Yeah, Wheeler leading the way with 12 points, five field goals. Pass out to the wing. Into the hands of Coleman, working on Toppin. Coleman goes to work inside. Cash somehow sneaks it through beyond the outstretched arms of Toppin. Just a bad pass. Grady has to leave his feet, could not corral it. Wheeler has a tendency to throw one-handed passes off the dribble. You can't get it back right when it leaves that hand That was wild out of control. I believe he has six turnovers That is unwheeler like that's a part of his game. He's really improved this season the transfer from Georgia Diara on a three Tapped around cash Strong take all the way to the rack. It's Marcus Williams. AM doing a lot of slip screening on the offense. They're not setting the screen. Guys are getting open shot, long shots, long rebounds. Time Marcus out, Williams. Kentucky. Yeah, Marcus Williams knows how to finish, how to play. He has had a terrific game. And we can see their confidence is building all season long. I, I think a turning point, they went out to Oregon State. Now, Oregon State. For the Sweet 16 Elite 8 team last year, but they're not very good. But a true road game, and AM controlled that game and won it from start to right. finish. But you win a true road game before league play, get your confidence at a high level. Kentucky has turned it over three out of the last four possessions. They have not been sharp handling the basketball. And now Wheeler out of the lineup. Ty Ty Washington handling at the point, as is Mintz. Top into Shibway in the trees and fouled on the floor by the Aggies. Wait, look how many Aggies are around that basketball in the paint. Swarming. Oh, my goodness. Swarming defense by the Aggies. Timeout in SEC play. And even though they're not the biggest team out there, I mean, he plays awfully big and makes up for some of the lack of size elsewhere. And why the numbers are so good is because after you play all the early games, you've been scouted. Yep. All, every SEC team knows how you play, knows your strengths, they know your weaknesses, and Coleman has responded, especially in the bigger moments. How about this? The Aggies, 30 of their 41 points in the paint. And how solid have they been on the defensive end? So good. And Ty Ty has been off, but a foul. Slap on the wrist, says the veteran official Tony Green. This will be the fifth and sixth free throw already this half for Kentucky. Four consecutive SEC Players of the Week award for Ty Ty. Last guy to do it, Devin Booker. He turned out to be pretty good. Yeah, not bad. Good name. We all wondered that he didn't start it all for Kentucky. That's right. Was pretty good. <laughs> On Sunday, the 11th annual We Back Pat Week continues with a women's basketball quadruple header that starts with two games right here on the SEC Network. Number 23, Kentucky hosting Ole Miss at noon. And then the fifth-ranked Lady Balls in Athens taking on number 13, Georgia Kelly Harper and company, the only undefeated team in SEC play, 17-1 overall, 6-0 in the conference. Joni Taylor doing great work in her seventh year with the Georgia program. Back to a three-point game, 15 and a half minutes to play, sellout crowd, Reed Arena. 
I remember the first half when Wade Taylor who has the basketball came in. He was very aggressive Try to take it to the rim get openers Diara Loaded up a wide open three from the wing You can live with that shot Good look he shoots 35% on the year for three and what's interesting. They really haven't settled for a lot of jump shots No again 30 of their points have been in the paint. You would have expected those kind of numbers from Kentucky. Yep. Toppin to Mintz and back to Washington. Out of bounds to Kentucky. And did it go off of Washington's leg? Buzz Williams thought so. Buzz Williams has turned a shade of red. Wow. That's tomato red. That is tomato. I mean, that is a healthy looking shade of red. Trying to wonder if he saw what did he see? Yeah, I think it was out on DR. Might have gotten a break there. Well, doesn't matter. Ball don't lie, and neither does Henry Coleman. Brady, there it is, Kellen Brady, the SEC's top three-point shooter. But how quickly, though, are these Aggies double-teaming the basketball? Mm -hmm. Different spots, different moments. You don't know where the doubler's coming from. That is the first basket for Brady. AM can't respond. Mintz tracks down the long rebound. Mintz crossover drive in traffic. No whistle. Here come the Aggies. Boy, I think Oscar had an easy lob. He was ahead of the crowd. Diara hammered by Toppin. When they're aggressive defensively, Mike, what they've done is they push. And there are four Aggie jerseys out front in the easy finish. Terrific pass from the freshman. Taylor to Coleman. These are easy. Diara, the sophomore out of Queens, shooting 61% on the year. Knocks down the first. It's only the sixth free throw of the game for the Aggies. The three for six. Kentucky, meanwhile, enjoying life at the line as they often do. Ten for 16. Two for two for Diara. And the lead for AM is back to four. Wheeler back in the lineup. Washington tries to thread the needle inside the top end, but it goes out of bounds. You know, the angle is so tough. Washington goes to the left. Popping his baseline. And as he cuts baseline, here comes the ball handler right mm -hmm. into you. Toppin wants it in the air. It's just a tough play to make. 12th turnover on Kentucky tonight. And he's trying to win their ninth in a row. They're off to their best start in six years. That was the Alex Caruso team, the last year for Caruso, also known by many. As Ball Mamba now enjoying life with the Chicago Bulls. Good help by Diara. Diara hounded by Mintz. The Taylor. Taylor probes the left side. Nothing there. Inside Cash. Cash with a reverse on the big man, Sheboy. But how patient was he, though, when he caught it? Took a look around, no double team. Nobody on the weak side took it up and under. Masterful use of the pivot foot. And a steal by Taylor. Off and running ahead of the pack. Kicks it out for an open three. Oh, I thought for sure Taylor was going to go all the way to the hole. 
And there's Toppin on the flush on the other end. Taylor made the decision, Mike. Let's see. I can either lay it in or yeah. I'll try to bring the house down. Right. It, the house didn't come down. No. You got <laughs> to make it for the house to come down. House got quiet. Yes, quickly. Jackson, step back three. Oh, another tough shot. Not what they were doing in the first half. Four-point game, 12 and a half to play. Toppin. Rise and fire from the baseline and fouled on the jump shot. I believe it's on Diara. Let's go back to what I talked about earlier. Because AM is switching everything, at some point, there's going to be a shorter player on a taller player. Diara's at 6'2", Toppin's at 6'9". Toppin just put one bounce and went over the top for the jump shot. That's and, a third and, foul on Diara. And Kentucky worked on that at shoot around today. That they know they're going to switch when a big gets a small on, either get him to the lane, go over or take one bounce, shoot your jump shot. Now, Kentucky is just so long as they typically are. Again, AM is not a particularly big team. But yet, they've been able to control this game in the paint for the better part of 28 minutes. You know, Toppin, has, Toppin has had some really good ball games. Played well at LSU. Team struggled. Wheeler went down. Washington went down in that game. They didn't shoot well, but Toppin at 14. Probably his best game as a Wildcat. Transfer from Rhode Island. Gets it done at the free throw line, and it's a two-point game. A little weave up top. Into the hands of Jackson. Where do the Aggies go for offense here? Well, they've gone high pick and roll mostly going downhill. Skip pass, but no one's there to receive it. Andre Gordon could not catch up to that one. Turnover, Kentucky basketball with a weak comeback. A two-point game in College Station. AM has led this game most of the way. We were last tied at six. Kentucky still in search of its first lead of the game. Two-point game. Under 12 minutes to play. And you still have a three-point shooter, Grady and Mintz, in the lineup. Obaseki on Mintz, now Grady. Under 10 to shoot for Savier Wheeler. Switch and switch. Everything's a switch. Got a small on a big inside. Wheeler trapped again. He keeps picking up his dribble. Gets it back, though, but that's a shot clock violation. I, I've never seen Savier Wheeler kept in check like this. You know, it's interesting. Because he knew there was a small on a big inside, he keeps trying to make the play. Right. When you're doubled, throw it up and in. You, you, you've got guys open. But he's keeping it in his hands, and they're just absolutely covering him up. And you pick up your dribble against this group. Oh, wow. I mean, they're just going to, you're going to be in the middle of an Aggie sandwich, and that's not a good formula. Andre Gordon has been quiet, 0 of 3, one of their better shooters. Tough shot that time by Taylor. Here come the Wildcats. Wheeler on the attack. Wheeler just out of sync. I mean, everybody in blue right now just looks out of sync. Uh, again, topping one of the lob. Right. Wheeler put it right, right in his chest yes. as he was jumping for the lob. Was that a problem for you back in the day? You wanted more <laughs> alley oops, and they kept throwing it to your chest. I pointed up a lot. <laughs> and they kept looking at me. Sonny, I can't throw it that high. Your vertical <laughs> leap, too good. Under 11 minutes to go, two-point game. Williams been quiet in the second half. Marcus Williams almost made some noise there. Look at that rebound. Ratford in traffic gets hammered. Tyrese Ratford. If there's a 6-2 guard in America that plays bigger than he does, I haven't seen him. He leads the team in rebound. You must put a body on him, and because he's 6-2, you think you don't have to. But we've seen enough games... 
He is aggressive, quick, active, and very strong. Originally out of Baton Rouge, transfer from Texas A&M. You know, he played in the NCAA tournament last year for Virginia Tech. Had 18 points in their game against Florida. And he led the Hokies in rebounding as well. And the ACC at six foot two, he's just a guy that has a knack for the basketball. Second one is good. One out of two from the line. The lead is three. Mince for three. Williams snatches the rebound and brings it up the court. Ratford drives, missed it. Reeled in by Ty Ty. Brady in rhythm. That's a tough shot. It's a tough shot on full speed. Here comes Jackson, draws the contact on the floor. When Quentin Jackson puts it in high gear, he is almost impossible to slow down. Well, he has ability to use the Euro step slowly and cross you up. So you rarely get a charge against him. But I think that last possession, when Kentucky's running, uh, Grady's a good shooter, but that's the hardest shot to shoot mm -hmm. on a full speed and just cast it. Now, easily he could have stopped. Ball fake because they're going to come to him. Got a guy in the corner. He'd be wide open. If he goes to him, you get the ball back. Struggles for Grady continue tonight. He's just one for seven. Ty Ty got his hands on it. Radford brings it back in. Under 10 minutes to go. Jackson stops. Kick out to Williams. Williams step back and an air ball looked pretty until it missed everything and then Mintz fouled on the other end now he's got to act like he's shooting they're going to give him two once you hear the whistle a good no call on the miss by Williams he got bumped a little bit after the shot So Davion Mintz to the free throw line. 71% on the year. It's easy to forget because it was such a disappointing last year for Kentucky, but he was so good. Yeah. And gets a friendly bounce on the first. Don't forget, coming up next, the SEC Now team will have a complete breakdown of both the games tonight. And highlights are about the other two big games on the schedule, including Alabama. Knocking off LSU as well as interviews with players and coaches and more that will begin at 1030 Eastern time right here on the SEC Network. Dari, Fish, Patrick Young doing great work in studio. Mike Morgan, John Sunbold here at a sold-out Reed Arena. It's been a fever pitch crowd from two hours before this game started all the way through. The Aggies would love nothing more than their first win against Kentucky in four years. Aggies have missed their last six shots. And that'll be seven. There's Cash. And he's fouled on the giddy up. And the Wildcats scrambling defensively. The penetration again, then the kick out. And because Jackson can make threes, you had three Kentucky players chasing him. Nobody put a body. Yep. Okay. You know, we talked about waiting on the Kentucky run. It hasn't really happened yet, but but what has happened for Kentucky is they have slowed down Texas A&M offensively. If they don't make mistakes, if Kentucky doesn't turn it over, and they make A&M run half-court offense, mm -hmm. first half that didn't happen. They turned it over, and we saw the excitement that the Aggies could push it. They want to push it because they can get good shooters open looks before Kentucky gets settled defensively. Oh, an empty trip at the line out of bounds to Kentucky Kentucky has not led in this game
Brady, good look. He is just off tonight. Gets it back, though. Brady, beautiful play by Kellen Brady to stay with it. And that's the first lead for the Wildcats. Good term, stayed with it. Came right back to him. Shooters know when they miss. Chased it down, finished the play. We'll see how the Aggies respond. Need a bucket. Brady on a steal and a foul. On who? Wow. It looked like Brady beat him to the ball and then just took the ball. I think he was guarding Taylor. Taylor going over the top. I think Brady ran right to the ball and took it from Cash. We had a pretty good look at that from here. Didn't I mean, see they, the they contact. Knew the, you know, the same play happened in the first half, and Grady was just a, an almost there, didn't get it. This time, I thought he beat I thought he beat the offensive player to the ball. Coach Calipari agrees with you. Eight on the shot clock. Jackson going to work. Swings it out into the corner. Taylor on a runner. Got Got it. Shot. Wow, tough shot. Right over Keon Brooks, and the Aggies are back on top. Brooks inside, dumps down low, beautiful feed, and that's the first basket for Ware. And this is the pace that Buzz Williams worried about today, mm -hmm. right? The ball goes in, Kentucky's going to fly right back down the court. Yeah, he knew all the numbers. He was quoting how many seconds Kentucky averages per possession, how many fast break points they get. Don't want to see this turn into a track beat. Brooks, oh, quick hands. Great hustle that time by Taylor. Playing above his years. Smart, quick, tough. Jackson. Into the paint. Bounce wow, pass wow. inside. And the reverse layup is true for Henry Coleman. Ty Ty trapped and wisely throws it off of Jackson out of bounds. Kentucky basketball when we come back. AM brilliant on the offensive time at time. You put it nation for this team. He'll remind you that they were picked second to last in the SEC this year. A lot of people were not that familiar with their roster. Not a ton of returning talent back. And here they are, a chance to go 5-0 and and win their ninth consecutive game. A team that uh, seems to be building momentum week in and week out every time we see it. Grady to Mintz. That's rhythm right there. That is beautiful looking offense, and that's a three point bomb. Terrific pass, and then Mintz caught it right in rhythm as a shooter. Kentucky in the lead for just the second time tonight. Now, see if Kentucky can settle in defensively and quit taking chances. Good block. Blocked by Toppin. Inside, two-hand plus. Henry Coleman drops the hammer. How about the freshman again, Wade Taylor? Penetration, find a teammate. He is a good-looking player out of Lancaster, Texas. Washington drops a dime himself to Toppin. Kind of the same offense, uh, both ends of the floor now. Can any of the guards contain the other one so they don't get to the lane? Nope. Diara had it blocked away. Here's Ty Ty on the push. Finds Grady for three. Off the iron. No. Still shooting woes for Kellen Grady tonight. He is one for nine from behind the arc. And I thought they had numbers. I, I love Grady as a shooter, but when you're not making them and you've got numbers, take advantage of your other guy. Look at Henry Coleman. Flying in for the offensive rebound. Bit of a force, though, and now it's Mintz on the cradle. Keep an eye on Grady. He went down hard. Maybe his left leg. Alley-oop from Washington. Toppin couldn't finish. Well, hopefully Toppin is okay. Is he? And meanwhile, Kellen Grady is limping. I think we can get a shot of Kellen Grady over to our left, but he is hobbling back 
the other way. You know, his left knee went underneath him when that last rebound on the defensive end. He'll come out, see if he's okay. Meanwhile, AM, I mentioned they were the top three point shooting team coming in. They have missed 12 consecutive threes. They are one for 18 from behind the arc. And somehow, only down two. And they've had a lot of games. We did the Arkansas game. They gave up 20 offensive rebounds to Arkansas. That's right. Buzz Williams looked at the stat sheet and said, well, we should not have won this. <laughs> but we did. One way or another. That's how they did it two years ago when he was SEC Coach of the Year. Coleman goes to work. And can't get the bounce. Cash. I'll tell you what, they're getting quality minutes from Aaron Cash. Okay, I'm going to tell you what. Big Oscar not only had to defend Coleman, but then he had to try to go get the rebound. Nobody else is helping Oscar inside. And he can't do it alone. Oscar Shibway then picks up the foul. His second. Shibway, six points. He had 11 rebounds at the half. He still has 11 rebounds. Shibway will pick up number 12 off the brick at the line by Cash. Cash now 0 of 3 from the free throw line. Does not look comfortable there tonight. Under five minutes to go. Washington rise and fire right between the eyes of Marcus Williams. Beautiful shot. Yeah, big rhythm. Rhythm bounce before the shot. Four-point lead for Kentucky. Ty Ty Washington, outstanding numbers this season. Can be a rhythm shooter just like that. Shooters take it off the bounce. We've got it ready to defend him because he's going to put it up quickly. Almost looks effortless with his offensive game. Oh, what a shot. Man. Coleman again. Coleman has got beast mode here in this second half. On and one. The ability of Marcus Williams to get down the lane and get it high off the glass. Because of how high he shoots it, offensive rebounders have more time to get to that rim. Coleman, what a beast inside. 17 points to lead all scores. Henry Coleman, the transfer from Duke, averaging over 18 points a game in conference play. Well, if AM loses this game, they're going to look back at some missed free throws. They're fortunate to get it back. 5 of 13 from the charity stripe and a timeout called by Buzz Williams. 4.15 to play. We will take it with a two-point game. Don't go away. Exciting times here at... Buzz Williams would take the same. Four minutes down to home crowd is loud, boisterous, and it has been a fight inside, and Coleman has been terrific. And all 12,000 strong standing up in anticipation of perhaps an upset win against the number 12 team in America, Kentucky. Ratford with three to Gotta shoot. Get the shot. Jackson, desperation launch. Raises the front iron and scooped up by Mintz. Washington, pretty tie tie Washington. So smooth. Young man out of Phoenix, Arizona. And that silences the crowd temporarily. Jackson, tough three. Back iron. Felt like a settle. Numbers. And Jackson came out of nowhere and blocked it out of bounds. Four on two numbers. You got to know where guys are. Mints wide open in the corner on the left side. Terrific hustle. Are, are you with me? Not wild about the last shot by Quentin Jackson. Yeah, you know, they put it in his hands, but they have not been able to get much right. on the offensive end, the Aggies. Seems like he can get something better there. Washington, no. And there on the rebound, Cash lost it. 
And AM gets it back. Wow, missed opportunity. Good steal by Toppin. Couldn't finish the play. Under three minutes to play. Radford on the attack. Radford, look at that! A straight on drive off the window and in. I think he's being guarded by the freshman Ty Ty Washington. They called the play from the sideline. 14 boots. Boots took it right <laughs> down the rim. Diara on Mintz. Mintz lost it. Picked it up, trying to get a timeout. Jump ball. Arrow goes to the Aggies. Quick substitution for Buzz Williams. He gets Marcus Williams back in the game. A coach's box warning for both Buzz Williams <laughs> and John Calipari. <laughs> you think these two guys are not into the game? I think the warning is that they finally are in their box. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They've been outside the box for the better part of 40 minutes. See what they call this time. Last time down, 14 Boots. Boots is the nickname for Tyrese Radford, and they called his number. Oh, this game just has a march feel to it, doesn't it? Yeah, it's fun. Every possession, so much anxiety for both these teams inside Coleman blocked cash picks it up plenty of time shot clock at 10 and timeout called by Buzz Williams that'll leave the Aggies with one timeout for the final two minutes and three seconds active hands by sheep one tuck we haven't had Many large leads at all and several lead changes in the second half. The other matchup would be Wheeler at 5-9 on Marcus Williams. Williams is a pretty high, good, good high jumper on his jump shot. Mm -hmm. Ratford with five, guarded by Toppin. Ratford taking it to him and then just lost it. Lost the handle. Good defense by Toppin. Great job by Toppin to get Ratford to put it in his right hand. Left hand dominant play. Cash will come in for Marcus Williams for defense and rebounding. 12th turnover on the Aggies. Under two minutes to go. Wheeler's been in big situations in his career. Tends to make big plays when he has to. Guarded by Diara. Wheeler. There's Ty Ty. Washington double teamed. Back to Wheeler with eight. A oh, great defense. Wheeler with four, a runner missed it. Shibwe rebound, no. Second opportunity, Toppin, and then a whistle. Jacob Toppin going top floor for the offensive rebound. The key on any offensive possession, especially for Kentucky down the stretch, get it on the rim. Get it on the rim, don't let the shot clock go out. Shibwe gets it back on the rim. Toppin strong, thought he made it. 76% on the year from the line is Toppin. And he's two of two tonight. Back iron on the first. Now Williams comes back in for offense for the Aggies. It's a miss, I know, Mike, but back iron's better than front iron. I'm with you. It's a release. He released it. No hesitation. Looking into an ocean wow. of white t-shirts. And Cobb Beauty. buries the second. One possession game, 61-58. Mintz comes in for Grady, who still looks a little bit hobbled. That puts Mintz on Q Jackson. Jackson really good off the bounce. Diara good off the bounce. Williams, Radford, all of them good off the bounce. A little full court pressure from Kentucky. Williams in the front court. Here's Ratford. Toppins good with his feet. Ratford. Up top, Williams. Eight to shoot. Williams on tie tie. Kick out pass. Ratford on a three. Missed it short. And there's Mintz on the rebound under a minute to play. Good 
defense. A decent look, but good defense. Kentucky will bleed some clock. Shot clock at 10. Washington misfires. Rebound in the Coleman's hands. Boy, what a battle inside. Warriors. <laughs> Some grown men going at it in the paint right now Bang. for every rebound. I mean, Shibway and Coleman, that's a battle. Henry Coleman has come to play tonight. Night at Reed Arena, can't beat it. Well, Cal talks about it to Rupp Arena yep. when they beat Tennessee. And then I watch UCLA with no fans. And then I turn on right. the playoff game and the Rams have 90,000 right, fans. Right, right. So, call me crazy, people should be in there cheering their teams on. Marcus Williams gets it up top. And Marcus Williams likes to go right. He'll fake and go left down the road, but he likes to go right when he plays. Ooh, tough shot. Diara. Early in the clock, too. And Ratford oh. almost saved it, trying to find Taylor. Now 11.9. Go for a steal, and then you got a foul. You got a foul quickly. You don't want this clock to run down at all. You don't want... You don't want Kentucky the ability to catch it and play keep away. Yep. And Kentucky ordinarily a good free throw shooting team. 15 of 22 tonight. Wheeler gets it to Mintz, who's bumped and fouled with 10.4 remaining. The luxury of having a guy like Severe Wheeler take it out, right? An assist guy. Right. He's had a tough night tonight with the number of turnovers he's had. But again, the, the ability, you have to get that ball in. Mm -hmm. He got it in. And you hit one here. And AM is really behind the eight ball. And Mintz is four of five from the free throw line tonight. So the good part is, he's been there. He's yeah. comfortable there. Right. Plus, he's the oldest guy in the building. Yeah, I was going to say, you want a veteran in this spot. Timeouts left for Texas A&M. So after these free throws, you got to inbound it, fly up the floor. As a free throw shooter, I always favored even having one of my guys in the lane because mm -hmm. that's the norm psychologically. Yeah, that's the normal yeah. thing. What a background! Rattles the first one Woo! home. A lot of rim. Yes, it was. <laughs> Shooter's touch, Davion Mintz will tell you. Yes. Kentucky players at half court telling each other to stay down on any ball fix. Miss that one again. No timeouts. Here comes Williams. Full throttle. Williams fires. Back iron. Shibway collects the board. And that is going to do it. Kentucky on the road in front of an incredible crowd here at reed arena is gonna pick a w up it wasn't pretty it was not the best shooting performance that this high octane offense has enjoyed this year they only had 30 at the half that's the lowest first half total all season long for big blue but the wildcat fans who made the trip will have a fun celebration tonight and a fun trip home you talk about tough to win on the road. Yeah, it is in the SEC this year We've uh, seen a number of what we'll call upsets, right? But when you go on the road and get a win then you celebrate no question right And even though the Aggies did not shoot the ball well tonight, they certainly show that they are for real Oh, yes taking Kentucky down to the wire. They're not going anywhere But it's gonna be the Wildcats improving to five and one in the SEC. Bottom line, sometimes you got to win them ugly, John Sunbold. Kentucky picks up the dub. Hey, a win's a win, but let's talk about the atmosphere in Reed Arena. Yes. What a night. What a. What a